gas giants. They are a fascinating type of non-terrestrial planet, predominantly composed of hydrogen and helium. Within our solar system, we can find four planets that are gas giants. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. But are these four really all that similar? And what actually is a gas giant beyond a ball of gas? Today, I'm joined by Times Infinity to take a deeper look into what gas giants are and what means we have to classify them. This video is part of a two-part collaboration, so after you watch this one, you can go check out the video we did over on his channel about Kuiper Belt object classification. But for now, gas giants. Jupiter and Saturn have been known to us since ancient times, but the fact they were very different in almost every aspect from the Earth, not so much. While well, we can trace early observations of Jupiter and Saturn to ancient Babylonia and China, it wasn't until the 17th century that astronomers like Galileo and Huygens began to slowly peel back the curtain on these planets' true nature. By the 18th century, telescopes had improved enough that it became clear that Jupiter and Saturn were primarily composed of gases rather than solid surfaces like the Earth. The discoveries of Uranus and Neptune in the 18th and 19th centuries started to gradually cement a model of the solar system where there were small rocky planets in the inner solar system and gaseous gigantic ones in the outer solar system. The term gas giant was first introduced in 1952 by science fiction writer James Blish and for a while it was used to refer to all giant planets in the solar system. As we were able to send probes to the gas giants towards the end of the 20th century, our understanding of these planets changed, with especially the Voyager missions being pivotal to this day. Voyager 2 remains the only probe to have ever visited Uranus and Neptune. And from its visits, we learned that Uranus and Neptune are internally very differently composed than Jupiter and Saturn. While Jupiter and Saturn are composed of over 95% hydrogen and helium, Uranus and Neptune are only around 20% hydrogen and helium by mass, the other 80% being mainly volatiles such as ammonia, water and methane. During the formation of the planets, ammonia, water and methane at this distance from the sun must have existed as solid ices, hence the term ice giants. These ices are heavier than hydrogen and helium and thus sank further down into their interiors and are now theorized to exist as either liquids or supercritical fluids under the high internal pressure. The outer shell of hydrogen and helium gases on ice giants are suspected of being much thinner than the thick gaseous envelopes of Jupiter and Saturn. Starting from the 1990s, the first exoplanet discoveries came rolling in. Many of these first exoplanets, such as 51 Pegasi b, were of a specific type of planet that got to be known as hot Jupiters. These are massive gas giant planets that orbited very close to their star, often even closer than Mercury's orbit, making them easy to spot for early exoplanet studies. Hot Jupiters are often close enough to their star to have become tidally locked, with one side of the planet perpetually facing the star. Some are thought to even reach temperatures in excess of 3000 degrees Kelvin. But how does a planet like that even form? In our solar system, the gas giants are contained to the outer solar system, but it turns out there is a specific reason for why this is the case. During planetary formation, gas giants form beyond a border we call the frost line. The frost line is the distance from the star at which volatile compounds such as water, methane and ammonia can condense into solid grains, hence the name. The state of the compounds affects what kind of planets form from them. With rocky planets forming later inside the frost line and gas giants forming first beyond it. In the early solar system, Jupiter as the most massive of the planets formed first and it's thought to have then started spiraling inwards towards the sun in what is known as type 2 migration, driven by the disk itself. Jupiter's inward travels were eventually halted when the planet Saturn formed, entering resonance with it and thus pulling it back outwards. 
Without Saturn being there to reverse this process, it's easy to imagine Jupiter having continued inwards, eventually becoming a hot Jupiter. This theory is known as the Grand Thek Hypothesis and poses that multi-planet dynamics can prevent hot Jupiter formations. Systems with only one migrating gas giant are thus thought to be more likely to produce hot Jupiters than complex systems like our own solar system. But hot Jupiters weren't all we found around other stars. One particularly strange gas giant type is an eccentric Jupiter. In astronomy, eccentricity refers to how much an orbit deviates from a perfect circle. Thus, an eccentric Jupiter is a gas giant that orbits in a highly elliptical orbit around its star. The planet HD 80606b is a good example, having a near comet-like eccentricity. Eccentric Jupiters are thought to most often represent an intermediate stage between Jupiter and hot Jupiter, but they can also form through other means. The trigger that produces them is thought to be outside gravitational perturbations rather than typical disk migration. As orbits tend to stabilize and get less eccentric over time, most eccentric Jupiters in the absence of continued gravitational perturbations become hot Jupiters, and thus most ones found are members of younger planetary systems. Hot Jupiters and eccentric Jupiters are gas giants classified by their orbital character. Unlike ice giants, which deviate by composition, they are generally of similar composition to Jupiter and Saturn. But you can't simply warm Jupiter by 300 or more degrees and don't expect some serious changes to occur. The Sudowski classification of gas giants deals particularly with how changes in temperature affect cloud formations and thus the overall appearance of gas giants. Within the system, there are five types of gas giants ranked from cold to hot. Type 1 giants have an appearance dominated by ammonia clouds and have temperatures below minus 120 degrees Celsius. Sadarsky type 1 giants require either a cool star or a distant orbit beyond the frost line. In our solar system, both Jupiter and Saturn classify as type 1 giants. Type 2 giants are too warm for ammonia clouds and would instead have an appearance dominated by water clouds, existing at temperatures below 20 degrees Celsius. For a giant planet to be this warm around a sun-like star, it would have needed to migrate inwards, but around cooler stars, it's possible for them to form in situ. Type 3 giants are too warm for either ammonia or water clouds. Between temperatures of 80 to 530 degrees Celsius, gas giants do not form global cloud cover because they lack suitable chemicals in the atmosphere for it due to the overwhelming amount of hydrogen. These planets would appear as featureless azure blue globes because of Rayleigh scattering and absorption by methane in their atmospheres, probably looking like the average ice giant. To warm a giant this much will in virtually all cases require migration. Around a sun-like star, they could exist exist in Mercury's orbit. At type 4 giants, we get into the hot Jupiter territory. Above about 630 degrees Celsius, atmospheric methane begins to break down and carbon monoxide will take over as the most dominant carbon compound in the planet's atmosphere. Type 4 giants will instead form clouds mainly composed of alkali metals such as sodium and potassium. These clouds would be very heat absorbent, creating a hot upper atmosphere but having a relatively cooler stratosphere below. These planets cannot form without migration being involved, existing well within Mercury's orbit. Type 5 giants are the hottest of hot Jupiters, exceeding temperatures of 1100 degrees Celsius, being so hot that silicate clouds might exist high up in the atmosphere. At these temperatures, the giant clouds may softly glow from thermal radiation. Around main sequence stars, these planets would have to exist within mere millions of kilometers from their stars, but around giant massive stars, they could exist further out. The cool thing about eccentric Jupiters is that they might periodically change between these types if they exist in the right orbits. While useful on its own, the Sadarsky classification does not take atmospheric haze into account due to its modeling complexity. Type 2 and Type 3 are both likely to be heavily covered in hydrocarbon hazes, which don't dissipate until 950 degrees Kelvin, so they could look more akin to Saturn and Titan. Ice giants, being of very different composition, would be very different if warmed that much. 
Thus, the Sudarsky class is only for proper gas giants. An ice giant in close orbit to its star is known as a hot Neptune. And compared to hot Jupiters, relatively few of them have been found. Ice giants have atmospheres dominated by methane, which absorbs red light, giving them their blue appearance. But as we just learned, methane breaks down at high temperatures, so they would likely lose that coloration, and instead their atmospheres may come to be dominated by either water, carbon dioxide, or carbon monoxide. Hot Neptunes wouldn't necessarily require migration to form, but their composition would be very different depending on if they did migrate or not. If these planets formed ex situ, migrating to their current locations later, they may contain large quantities of frozen volatiles and amorphous ices. Otherwise, if they formed in situ, their inventory of heavy elements should be made entirely of refractory materials. Jupiter has a mass of 317 times that of the Earth. That may seem massive, but gas giants can be up to 13 times more massive than Jupiter before they will engage in any sort of nuclear fusion and can be labelled brown dwarfs. But even though they can be so much more massive, you'd be surprised to know that they actually don't get much bigger than Jupiter under normal circumstances. This is due to gravitational compression. Gas giants being made mostly of gas aren't all that dense. So if you get more massive, rather than increase in size, they will mostly increase in density instead. That is unless you force the gas to expand by heating the planet. Thus, we get another peculiar type of hot Jupiter gas giant called a puffy planet. These gas giants have heated so much they have become bloated. Some of the largest known puffball planets, such as Tres 4b, are up to twice the size of Jupiter with extremely low densities. Since hydrogen is lighter than helium, if a gas giant were sufficiently close to its star, the solar wind might, over a long time, gradually strip a lot of it out of the atmosphere, resulting in a helium planet, which atmosphere would be dominated by helium rather than hydrogen. Helium planets are expected to have, besides helium, some carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide in their atmospheres. Due to hydrogen depletion, the expected methane in the atmosphere cannot form, because there is not enough hydrogen left for the carbon to combine with. Hence, carbon combines with oxygen instead, forming carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. Due to the atmospheric composition, helium planets are expected to be white or grey in appearance. Such a signature can be found in the exoplanet Gliese 436b, which has a predominance of carbon monoxide and is hypothesized to be a possible helium planet. Atmospheric stripping by the solar flux can do a lot worse than remove the hydrogen in extreme cases. The entire atmosphere can be stripped from the gas giant until just the core remains. The remaining core is known as a Phonian planet. Toy 849b is currently our best candidate for such a planet. So, we have established that gas giants tend to migrate after formation. While this process can result in hot Jupiters, it's also not rare for the planet to be ejected out of its planetary system, or eject other gas giants out, becoming rogue planets. Left without a heat source over the next billions of years, the planet would gradually cool until eventually it might drop below the boiling point of hydrogen. At this point, the upper atmosphere of the giant would begin to condense and rain down, while the helium, with a much lower melting point, would remain gaseous. The planet would compress as it experiences partial atmospheric collapse. Deep within the planet, metallic hydrogen would remain liquid under the extreme pressure, resulting in a shrunken, frigid world with liquid hydrogen oceans underneath a sheet of helium gas, both covering a supercritical fluid hydrogen and helium ocean much further down. I haven't really been able to find a name for this bizarre degenerate type of rogue gas giant, as the time required for the planet to cool that much likely more than exceeds the current age of the universe. While the concept has been formulated before, I suppose it's up to me to propose a name for this hypothetical class of planet? Maybe cryogenic planets? Truly, gas giants are some of the most fascinating types of planets, and have only become more so since we started finding exoplanets. 
They can exist in many bizarre forms, from ultra hot to ultra cool, have varying compositions and bizarre orbits. This video was made in collaboration with Times Infinity as part of a two part collaboration. Talking about gas giant classification on my channel and Kuiper Belt objects over on his. If you enjoyed it thus far, go check out his part of the collab over on his channel. If you like content like this, maybe stick around and subscribe for more. This has been YG Online and Times Infinity. Thank you so much for watching. Go check out our video on his channel, and I will see you in the next video. Stay tuned.